Number 8. The MV Ulta In early 2020, a strong extratropical cyclone named Storm Dennis swept across Western Europe. It came almost immediately after another destructive storm called Ciara, making things even worse in regions that were already experiencing catastrophic flooding like Ireland and the United Kingdom. In County Cork, Ireland, the strong wind pushed a ghost ship around near the coastal fishing town of Ballycotton. Known as the MV Alta, it came to rest on the rocks lining the shore. Built in 1976, the 262-foot-long vessel sailed under multiple names throughout its career as a merchant vessel. It was manned in 2018 near Bermuda, where its crew had to be rescued by the U.S. Coast Guard after running into problems during a trip from Greece to Haiti. It lost power and spent 20 days drifting in the Caribbean Sea while the crew tried to fix the problem, but they ultimately abandoned the ship thanks to an oncoming hurricane. Between then and its reappearance thousands of miles away in Ireland during Storm Dennis, the Alta was last seen in 2019 by a British Royal Naval ship in the Atlantic Ocean. The wrecked vessel quickly became a popular attraction for photographers and urban explorers who were able to board the old ship and explore it after it washed up. Some claiming to be a representative of the Alta's owner reportedly came forward recently and tried to claim the wreck, but it has remained at the crash site with an uncertain future. It has since deteriorated to the point where the Cork County Council fears it will break apart, and they are currently deciding whether to leave it as is, tow it out to sea, or dismantle it entirely for scrap. Number 7. HMS Resolute The British Royal Navy ship HMS Resolute was built for sailing in the Arctic. In 1853, it set out to find a missing explorer named Sir John Franklin and his crew, who had disappeared seven years before while searching for a sea route between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans known as the Northwest Passage. As luck would have it, the Resolute got trapped in ice off northern Canada, leaving its crew helpless as it drifted 1.7 miles east every day. After waiting out the winter, they decided to abandon ship in spring of 1854 and embarked on a treacherous march across the ice to reach another expedition point at Beachy Island. In the meantime, the Resolute broke free from the ice and started drifting. Over a year later, in September 1855, the crew of an American whaling ship called the George Henry spotted the Resolute off Baffin Island coast in northern Canada, about 1,200 miles from where it first got stuck in the ice. The U.S. Congress bought the ship for $40,000 with plans to refit it and return it to England as a gesture of national courtesy. In 1856, U.S. Navy Commander Henry J. Hartstein sailed the Resolute to England and presented it as a gift to Queen Victoria. It remained in British waters, serving the Royal Navy until 1879, when it was finally retired and salvaged for timber. Some of the vessel's wood was used to build a desk that now actually sits in the Oval Office at the White House. Number 6. Mary Celeste Built in Nova Scotia, Canada during the mid-19th century, the Mary Celeste was a two-masted merchant vessel called a brigantine. It ran aground during a storm one day in 1867 and was abandoned by its owners before falling into American hands and undergoing a major renovation. In late 1872, the 103-foot-long ship set sail from New York Harbor heading to Genoa, Italy under the command of Captain Benjamin S. Briggs. Also on board were his wife, Sarah, and their two-year-old daughter, as well as eight crew members. Less than a month later, the captain of a British brigantine called De Gratia spotted a ship moving strangely in choppy seas at full sail about 400 miles east of the Azores. It turned out to be the Mary Celeste. Nobody was on deck and the captain's signals weren't answered. Crew members from the De Gratia soon boarded the vessel and found no sign of the captain, his family, or the crew. A lifeboat was missing, and there was a few feet of water in the hold, but the ship was otherwise undamaged and stocked with six months' worth of provisions. The logbook's last entry was dated nine days earlier, and there were no obvious signs of anything wrong. By all appearances, the ship had been evacuated in an orderly fashion. But why is the burning question? It's a mystery that remains unanswered to this day. At the time, maritime law dictated that a salver could get a generous cut of the assessed value of a rescued vessel and its cargo. Eager to cash in, the De Gratia brought the derelict Mary Celeste to Gibraltar, where an investigation found no evidence of any foul play despite countless rumors and allegations of an alcohol-fueled mutiny, violence at the hands of the De Gratia's crew, and plots to commit insurance fraud. The judge seems to have sided with these beliefs and awarded them one-fifth of the total value of the ship and its cargo. 
Number five, the Carol A. Deering. Built in Maine in 1918, the five-masted cargo schooner known as the Carol A. Deering transported coal and other goods between the United States, South America, and regions of the Caribbean. It had been operating for only a few years when it ran into trouble off the North Carolina coast in 1921 while heading to Norfolk, Virginia from Brazil. While sailing past Cape Lookout, a crew member used a megaphone to tell a lightship keeper that the ship had lost both its anchors during a brutal storm. He asked the keeper to pass the word on to the ship's owner, and that was the last anyone ever heard of the Carol A. Deering's crew. Just three days later, a surfman found the vessel grounded off Cape Hatteras, an area notorious for shipwrecks, nicknamed the Graveyard of the Atlantic. The weather was still bad, and it took rescue ships days to reach the Deering. They were confused to find not a single person on board. The crew's logbook, personal belongings, and lifeboats were also missing. It was evident that they abandoned the ship in the middle of preparing for the next day's meal, indicating that something had gone majorly wrong. The ship's rudder was also disengaged from its stock, and the steering wheel was completely shattered. After failing to salvage the Carol A. Daring, the Coast Guard declared the ship a navigational hazard and decided to blow it up with dynamite. To this day, nobody knows what happened to the vessel's crew. Some believe that pirates or communists kidnapped them. Others blame bad weather, but we'll probably never know the truth. What do you think happened to the Deering? Let us know in the comments down below, and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like what you've seen so far. Number 4. The 21 Friends In 1872, a group of 21 Philadelphia Quakers paid for the construction of a three-masted schooner, which they lovingly named the 21 Friends. While transporting a load of timber from Georgia to Philly in 1885 under Captain John Jeffries, the vessel was rammed by another ship off Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, an area notorious for shipwrecks. Jeffries sent out an order to abandon ship, leaving the 21 Friends and its cargo to the mercy of the sea. While his decision to put the crew safety first was appropriate, Jeffries apparently underestimated the ship's overall resiliency. During the next two years, the 21 Friends was spotted on both sides of the Atlantic before finally grounding on a shore in Ireland. The cargo was then salvaged, and the ship was turned into a fishing vessel. It remained in service for many years to come, and was finally retired in 1914. Number 3. Zabrina Launched in 1873, the 189-ton, three-masted schooner Zabrina was designed with the intent to transport meat from the Rio de la Plata estuary, located between Argentina and Uruguay. But the 100-foot vessel's slow speed and lack of refrigeration made this task extremely difficult, so its owners decided to use it for shorter trading trips in the Mediterranean and throughout Europe instead. On September 15, 1917, the Zabrina left Cornwall, England for St. Priuc in northwestern France with a cargo full of coal. Two days later, it was discovered ashore at Rosal Point near Cherbourg. Thanks to its flat bottom, there was no actual damage to the hull, and the ship itself was in fairly good shape besides some slight damage to the rigging. The lifeboat was in place, the galley fire was still burning, and the dinner table was set up and ready for five people, and the crew's personal belongings were still on board, along with the logbook, which had no suspicious entries. But the captain and 23 crew members were nowhere in sight, and their disappearance remains unsolved even to this day. One popular theory suggests that they were captured by the crew of a nearby German U-boat. This is entirely plausible considering World War I was in full swing, and an Allied vessel had recently reported seeing a U-boat in the area. The Zabrina was also carrying more crew members than usual. For this reason, the Germans may have classified it as an armed merchant ship when they otherwise would have left it alone. It'd be odd that the Germans didn't damage or sink the ship, but it's possible that they came under an Allied threat while carrying out the abduction and decided to leave the area as soon as possible. Other theories suggest the crew was somehow swept off the ship or victimized by an ancient sea monster. The Zabrina was eventually towed to Portsmouth, where it was set on fire in Velder Creek. Today, it's most likely buried by reclaimed land with a housing estate on top of it. Although it's out of sight, it hasn't been totally forgotten, especially among those who still hope to find answers about the captain and crew's mysterious fates. Number 2. Governor Parr Built in 1918, the 200-foot-long four-masted schooner Governor Parr was historically named after John Parr, a British military officer who became an early governor for Nova Scotia. At the time it was built, the ship was claimed to be the most handsome schooner in Atlantic Canada, 
Sadly, its glory was short-lived. Only five years later, in 1923, the Governor Parr met a rough storm in the North Atlantic while carrying lumber from Nova Scotia to Buenos Aires. The ship lost several crucial pieces, including its mizzen and spanker, and took on significant damage to its masts and deck. Captain Angus Richard and one crew member were killed that day, and their survivors were rescued by another ship. Multiple attempts to tow or destroy the Governor Parr failed, and the vessel was eventually abandoned for good. Sightings continued for multiple years throughout the Atlantic, though, with the drifting vessel being spotted as far away as the Canary Islands, posing a navigational hazard to other ships but serving as a testament to the quality craftsmanship of its original builders. Number 1. The MV Joyita the 69-foot-long MV Joyita, or Little Jewel, was built in 1931 to be a wooden luxury yacht for American film director Roland West, who lovingly named the boat after his wife. During World War II, it answered the call of duty and entered into service as a naval yard patrol vessel. After the war, the Joyita fell back into private ownership and was chartered off as a trading and fishing boat. In 1951, it left Samoa for the Tokelau Islands with one working engine, a load of medical supplies, an oil drum, food, and other cargo. By then, Joyita was already running a day late thanks to mechanical problems, and the vessel's 16 crew members and 9 passengers were eager to get moving. The 270-mile trip was expected to take just two days or less, but the Joyita failed to show up at its destination on time. Nobody received a distress call from the crew, and a search and rescue mission failed to turn up any sign of the missing ship. Five weeks later, the captain of a merchant ship spotted the Joyita about 600 miles from its scheduled route. It was partially submerged, and its captain, crew, and passengers had disappeared, along with the majority of the cargo. All of the lifeboats were gone, too. There was a bit of structural damage, and the radio was tuned into an international distress channel. But there was a break in its cable that would have put the radio's range at only two miles, which is why nobody heard a distress call. The starboard deck was covered with mattresses, and there were blood-covered bandages lying near a bag of medical equipment. Considering the poor condition the Joyita was in, it wasn't surprising that it encountered problems at sea. But the vessel was extra buoyant, thanks to its cork-lined holds, so there was little chance of it sinking fully, and the decision to abandon ship made little sense to investigators. The missing occupants were never found, so their fate is a mystery. One theory suggests that the captain was injured or incapacitated, that he was unable to tell the passengers and crew that the safest bet was to remain on the waterlogged vessel. To this day, everyone is still simply listed as missing. Thanks for watching. Which of these ghost ships interested you the most? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.